Hello all my art loving friends. Today I have a very exciting video for you because we are going to unbox and take a look at these Paul Rubens Goose Eye Paints. It's beautiful packaging so let's get into it, try them out and see what we think. So one of the first things I do when I'm sent a product that I don't really know anything about is that I go to YouTube myself and I try to find more professional reviewers like Kimberly Crick and the frugal crafter Lindsay Ryrick. They are voices in the review industry that I definitely trust. I also do watch a couple of other videos if it looks like they're going to be applicable even if I don't know the person very well who's reviewing them just to see what they say and especially if they're not very long videos. So there were about four videos on this that I watched and they were all pretty useful. I'll try and remember to link them below but uh, Kimberly Crick definitely had the most to say. Well, Lindsay's video was an hour long so she also had a lot to say but anyway we'll get into that later. But Kimberly Crick did mention that these paints were probably best used on something like rice paper and I was sent some rice paper or masa paper, one of the two. I don't recall which but I have it here in my studio so I'm going to dig that out as well as trying it on regular watercolor papers. The first thing that is quite obvious is the absolute beautiful packaging. <laughs> now there's just something to be said about nice packaging. Us humans tend to enjoy it. So if I pull it out of the sleeve it's in a very sturdy black box. And then we open that up. It has their brochure that is all in a different language. Their colors and color names also in a different language. So we'll try the Google Translate app which I don't actually have on my phone. So I'll have to get that. Nice foam and the beautiful tubes of colors. Just strikes everyone as very unique because of the black tubes and it is somewhat unique. I really like it. So Gusai is a Chinese painting pigment and it's just meant for more like one stroke stuff and that's probably why the rice paper and the masa paper are recommended by Kimberly and whatnot. She had some trouble layering with these when she used them and we'll just see what happens with us. Another reviewer had a couple of tubes come hard, these two I believe. Mine don't feel hard at all. I guess we'll see when we go to use them. Uh, one thing I did notice in Kimberly's video is that they definitely crack when dry. So I was originally going to pour all these into full pans but after seeing how badly these cracked when they dried, I'm not going to do that. This is a set that I will use straight from the tubes when I want to use it. Alright, let's try this first on our cotton watercolor paper and see what we think. And then we will move to the rice or masa paper. I may have both papers. I'm not sure. I haven't actually went and looked yet. For the watercolor portion of this video, I want to use my Hanamule 100% cotton sketchbook. And I do have a couple of things to say about that before we begin because I have been using it a couple of times now. So if I open it up, the first page is fine. Second page, third page is fine. Uh, this one, I think it's fine. I have tape there still because I have unfinished paintings over here from class. But this fourth page or whatever page we're on now is basically a part. Like I think that it was maybe glued and now I have kind of separation there. I have flipped through the rest of the pages in this book and I don't think that will happen again. I can't guarantee that obviously, but I think that is just kind of a side effect of being part of the beginning of the book and the beginning of the binding. I'm really hoping it doesn't happen again. However, because of that soft edge that became of that, it did cause the paper to rip more when I pulled the tape off of this little painting which I did in class. That is just something I've noticed with this paper in general is that it does rip more easily and obviously when some of the raw edge is already showing it's going to rip even more easily. So just be really careful taking your tape off. It hasn't been a huge problem and this tape has been here for a long time so it'll be interesting to see how that comes off. But if you have any raw edge at all it's going to magnify that effect. Also, the paper is very smooth so this is supposed to be a cold press watercolor paper and in my opinion it's a kind of a cross probably between a cold press and a hot press. It's very smooth. Very smooth. So it's not hot press smooth but it is definitely more smooth than uh, the Edger cold press, the Arches cold press, the Baohong cold press. Those all have a texture like a roughness and a Oh, what do you want to call that? Like a fabric feel that you can feel. <laughs> and this is just really smooth. However, I have enjoyed painting on it. I think the paintings look quite pretty. So that isn't a problem yet, but I can't give you 
a very definitive idea of what I think of this sketchbook yet. So I think I'm going to reserve the rest of this page for something else and do some swatches up here and a little painting down here. I think that'll be plenty to give us an idea of what this looks like on regular watercolor paper. I also have an itch to try this on black watercolor paper. I only have one day to film this because I'm going out of town again and Paul Rubens did request that I do this video within seven days of receiving this. This actually came while I was on my 12 day vacation and so my seven days is actually <laughs> long past if you consider when it actually arrived in my PO box. So unfortunately I feel like this video may be a little bit rushed but we'll just have to see. I am going to try it on this paper hopefully black paper and hopefully rice paper or masa paper. Masa is different than rice paper, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, masa is sulfite pulp and rice paper is rice. So I have my little egg tray and I have to put two colors in each one. That's just how we're gonna go about that. I wanna see what these colors actually look like on this paper and go from there. As far as I remember, there's only Binder separation in the white and the gold, so not too bad. I was pretty impressed. As far as the swatching goes, I filled that first square with a black permanent marker for covering up with the white later, which I almost forgot to do, but finally did. And then I was putting the color down and I'm like, oh, I usually do swatching with salt, but for some reason it didn't really occur to me with this paint to put the salt in there. But as soon as I put the yellow down, I'm like, yeah, salt. I Why would I not do it with this paint? I think because of the reviews I had already watched, knowing that this was probably more like a gouache paint, it just didn't seem like I should put this salt, but I wanted to and I did. You can see I did. And some of them had some pretty cool effects with salt, so I'm really glad that I did. I also used my pinstriping tape to separate this, and that was really fun. When the tape comes off, it's always a pleasure. Now I can guess at some of these pigment names, but I did not actually take the time to download the Translate app and see what the colors were. There is a color chart on Amazon when you go to buy this set, but I couldn't see any matches. Like some of the colors match that color chart on Amazon for this listing, but there were colors on that chart that weren't in this set. So I don't think that's a good resource to go to. I think you should probably use your Google Translate app or whatever Translate app you have and use the brochure that comes with the set itself. We obviously have a white, which is probably a Chinese white or a titanium white, a lemon yellow, uh, probably a yellow ochre, what is that, a raw sienna, probably raw sienna first, then yellow ochre, then burnt sienna, then burnt umber, and the reds, I mean, goodness only knows there's so many reds there. Obviously, we have crimsons and vermilions and alizarin crimsons and roses and just beautiful reds. In fact, I love the reds in this set, can I just say? Plus, dioxazine purple would be my guess on that one because it becomes so incredibly dark when you use it in a really... Uh, pigmented way, if you know what I mean, of Iridian. And then the greens are a little bit of a mystery because some of them are very opaque. And there's definitely not like a sap green or anything in there. So they were interesting. I definitely had to mix them with blue and yellow to get a more sap green type of color. And even though some of the blues are really opaque, I'm in love with them. The blues in this set are absolutely gorgeous. There is an obvious blue that I think is probably an ultramarine blue. The rest, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but they're gorgeous. Probably an indigo, a Prussian blue. I don't think there's actually like a Payne's gray, but I think if you mix one of the dark blues with the black that comes in the set, you'll get a beautiful Payne's gray. Anyway, I enjoy the colors in this set. Can I just say, I do wish there was more of a hooker's green or a sap green, but other than that, pretty happy with the color selection. While we're waiting for the rest of the swatches to finish, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to a once a week uploading schedule for a little while. I bought a tiny little house a couple of towns over that I have to completely remodel. That is something I do a lot on my own. I've done it since I was 20. I also uh, need to spend some time with my grandma. She's not doing well. So I have to go to a once a week schedule from now on. So my grandma still lives on her own independently and she was on our 12 day vacation with us and I just saw every single day it seemed like she was doing worse, <laughs> which is concerning. So I want to go down, I wanna spend at least two days a week with her. She lives in a different town than I do. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away. So I think if I could spend like two days a week with her, uh, it would just, I just need that time. I need that time with her. Oh, and there's the white on the black. It's really cool, but some of it fades out. And I think if you layer it, it'll become more opaque. 
But anyway, I hope you understand why I'm going back to a once a week schedule for a little while. And thank you so much for your continued support and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And I replaced that bottom tape a little bit higher so that I could start my painting under it. But here are the swatches when they're all dry and the salt is mostly rubbed off. When I rub the salt off, uh, the paper got really, really dirty. So maybe the paint wasn't all dry or maybe the paint will come off on your fingers afterwards. I'm not sure. I need to test that still and I will let you know here in a bit on this voiceover. I am starting out with a little stucco, basically window and door in a stucco building kind of scene with some flowers. And I didn't want to get too serious with this. It was just in my sketchbook. I wanted to try the paints out, see how they did on this paper and go from there. So this paper, I noticed when I did the stucco color right there at the top, I have a lot of resist sometimes on this paper. And I noticed that on the painting in the previous page when I was doing that in class. I don't know if you like rub your fingers across it at all, it starts resisting. Like it really maybe absorbs the oil in your hands. Unlike etcher paper, I have had a resist a couple of times in other papers I've used, but not as quickly or obviously as this paper. And I think probably because it's so darn smooth. Yeah, it's cold pressed supposedly. It does feel good when you're painting on it where you have no resist, but you get that resist way more easily than some other paper that I've used. And instead of going right to the masa paper or the rice paper, I decided to try the black watercolor paper. It took me a while to find it in my studio. I had no idea where it was. It was still unopened. <laughs> this is the Stonehenge Legion 100% cotton black watercolor paper. And oh my goodness, is this a pleasure to work on? Like I, I have no experience with black watercolor paper, hardly at all. And I was having so much fun. <laughs> the paper just... Mm. Oh, it just mm, felt so good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can understand that. I feel like a, a goofy person just explaining it. But anyway, the, the paper felt amazing. The paint looked beautiful on it. And of course, I did expect the paint to fade out a little bit once it dried. And of course it did. But look how beautifully bright it goes on at first. And I think that's pretty natural with any black cotton watercolor paper and regular watercolor paint, let alone, I don't know anything about this paint so much, except that it does appear to be more matte and more opaque than regular watercolors. I didn't expect it to be as opaque as gouache, for example, so I expected it to fade a little bit, and it does as it dries, but it acts really nicely, and I think this just goes to prove it to you that your paper is more important than your paint. I still don't know what I think about this paint. I'm completely done with three experiments on this paint. I don't know what to think of it. I, I'm such a terrible reviewer. I'm so sorry, you guys, but like it's more matte. Yes, I know that. It is enjoyable to work with. It works fine. I didn't have trouble with it. Kimberly noticed bad smells. Uh, Lindsay did point out that she thinks Kimberly got a bad batch of this paint because she had some tubes that were overpressurized and some really bad smells some binder separation and so on. And Lindsay didn't have any of those problems. So I encourage you guys to go, <laughs> I keep saying that wrong, to go watch both of those videos because they're very interesting. Like Kimberly still had some good points, but Lindsay had a way different experience. And I think she's right. I think Kimberly got a bad batch because I enjoyed the paint a lot. And it, you can see it's super fun working with it here. And just to point out, I did not notice any bad smells. So there you go. That, that's also interesting. <laughs> I did have a couple of tubes like pop out when I first opened them, but only, I don't know, maybe three out of the whole set. And the gold had a lot of binder separation. That was the only one I had a lot of trouble with. And I already mentioned the gold and the white, but the gold was the worst. So I found masa paper, but I did not find rice paper. And as I mentioned, they are different. So I'm gonna mark. One of these is really fuzzy and one of these sides is really smooth. So just going to mark the smooth side. And then I think you could just paint on this as is without doing this fun step, but I wanna try this and crinkle this all up and ruin that beautiful smooth sheet of paper. <laughs> oh, so sad. I'm just gonna keep crinkling 
in lots of different directions. That's pretty good. And then I have this little glass tub of warm water. And it goes till it's soaked through. It doesn't take very long. And then if you have a surface where you can't put out a wet piece of paper on it, then you would lay down a few paper towels, something absorbent, or a thin rag, something without a lot of texture on it, and put on there. Oh look, the water has turned a bit cloudy. Interesting. Oh, it's made these beautiful cracks in the paper. I don't know if you can see the crack texture. Okay, so I'm going to wring that out. And by wringing it out, I really compacted it, so I have to be super careful opening it back up. <laughs> this is fun. A little bit of water. I don't really have to clean that up because it will actually help it stick, but oh, I did rip it after all. That's okay. I wonder. Yeah, it's ripping really easily. So when they say be extra careful, they mean it. So where's my X? See if it even stayed. Yep. So the X was the smooth side. And I'm going to put the smooth side down for now and lay this across here. So I'll be actually painting on both sides of the paper. Wow, yeah, super fragile. It's kind of cool. I mean, dangerous, but cool. All right, now, oops, I was gonna spray my paint ahead of time. This does seem to kind of dry out. Well, it's been a while. It dries out like all normal paint does. So I'm going to try and do some kind of fish scene. Oops, I just dipped my water, or my brush, in the water that I had over here for the masa paper. That's so funny. Uh, I don't even know why I did that, but, but it's funny. Oh, I just did it again. I think because it's on my right hand side and I'm right handed. Whatever. And my water from the previous painting is, is a little bit muddy from all the white I used and the opaque colors. So probably makes sense. But I'm going to do some like watercolor, and I don't mean watercolor, I mean the color of water. And kind of just spread this out on the fuzzy side. I'm gonna get some dark colors going too. I was hoping by this being super wet that this would just kind of spread a bit randomly. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I would say it mostly isn't. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty, but too strong. Okay, so I'm just gonna basically tone this paper. I will fast forward through the rest of that. All right, and then I was supposed to leave for my next trip like a half an hour ago. So I'm going to take this heat gun that was gifted to me and see if we can really mess this up by using a heat gun on it. I'm hoping it doesn't mess it up and that it just works perfectly. I will be careful because I need this to dry in order to flip it over and do my artwork on it. And it's so incredibly wet. Could take a few years. I probably should have put it on paper towels because it would absorb some of the water way better. We'll see. Okay, that's definitely not working. So I'm going to see if I can pull this up without destroying it. I have to be careful where it's already ripped. See how the color went right through. It will do that. So be careful the surface you're working on. And I will lay this, it's kind of scary. I think I'm gonna lay this outside in the sun for a while or maybe just on some paper towels. I don't have paper towels down here in the studio, but that would help. I'll be right back. All right, grab some paper towels from upstairs. I'm gonna grab a couple layers here and see what to do. I don't know what to do. So fragile, so scary. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would be like Mod Podge or whatever. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but where if you overlap it where it's ripped, it might stick back together. Okay, got that. Let's grab another layer and squish it. Oops, probably ripped it more. Ooh, that's pretty. Has the color come off on the paper towel here, so super pretty. Okay, now what can I rip it some more apparently? Really pretty, I could use it with it wet like this if I wanted to. It's only damp right now since I absorbed a lot of it. Maybe I'll heat gun a little bit more and then we'll finish this up. All right, now we are on the smooth side of life here. I am hoping to do some fishies, fishy fishies. So let's see, 
We have some beautiful colors here. Look how easily that rewet. Granted, this was sprayed with a water bottle a few minutes ago. It was really fun working on this paper when it was slightly damp because this paint in general does not have a big flow to it when you're working in wet applications anyway. But with the combination of the wet, well damp, masa paper and the paint being wet, it just made some really cool, I don't know, feathery things through the cracks in the paper from crinkling it up. Anyway, it was really fun, but it does need some more definition at the end. You'll see what I do about that small problem, or I don't know if you want to call it a problem, challenge on this kind of paper, I guess you could say. And I was definitely going for the more one stroke effect here, which you are supposed to do with this paint and paper. All right, let's let that dry and define some things. That was a few minutes with the heat gun and it's pretty much dry. Uh, because it's so fragile, I am taking, I have very clear scotch tape. I'm going to tape the back side of it just a little bit so that I feel a little more confident that it will stay together for this next step. And it did obviously shrink up a little bit. Okay, that should be okay. So on the other side, because that tape is clear, you can't really tell that it's there. So that's great. Next thing I was going to do was just use a regular fine liner and define the fish, but I'm pretty sure that even a 0.5 like I wanted to use will rip the paper. So I'm in here in my large fine liner bag and I'm looking for those fine liners that are more like this, more like the soft tips. And I know I have a lot in here, I just have to find one that I like. So I will do that and be right back. I have a brush sign pen and we will define these fish. And that brush pen was a little bit too thin, so I did end up switching to a slightly different pen. It was I, probably the Tombow, I don't know, it was a little bit thicker. All right, here is everything we accomplished with this paint. It was so much fun. Well guys, what can I say? I get sent art supplies, I use the art supplies, I have fun with the art supplies. I'm probably a terrible reviewer of art supplies because I just kind of like them all. <laughs> However, you can tell a few things about this. They are drying very matte, uh, still a little wet here, but there's no transparency or shine or anything on most of these colors. So they definitely remind me more of using a gouache than a watercolor, like a high quality watercolor. But the paintings are pretty. They're pretty. And having that matte effect on them does make it easier to photograph. Isn't that cool? By the way, this paper was so fun to use. There was nothing about it that annoyed me or anything like that. You know, re-wetting the palette to use it again. Yeah, it reminded me of any watercolor or gouache that dries out on your plate here. You're gonna have to spray it, especially the ones that harden a little bit more like this does because you can see there are some cracks in them. They need a little bit more time to re-wet. But for me, I will use them straight from the tube. I think it's really fun to do that sometimes. In my mind, I will think of them more like a gouache when I use them. Uh, they have characteristics of both watercolor and gouache and that's fine. They will be in my lineup for light fast testing, so stay tuned for that in the distant future. <laughs> we'll check again after three months once I get them in the window. And I think that there's probably some dyes in them. I don't really know. Uh, everyone I watch doesn't have the pigment information, but lots of fun stuff coming up. I would say if you're a diehard watercolorist, you know, maybe you don't need these. But if you want to try some kind of new painting and maybe some kind of new painting technique, this was interesting, then you can give these a try. They are big tubes for a somewhat affordable price if you compare them to others, and I had a good time. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Goo Sai. <laughs> I looked it up on Google how to pronounce it, so I hope it's right. That's a lot of talking. Hopefully I didn't bore you. But for me, I'm going to what was I saying? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so funny. Don't go under there. I can't see you guys under there.
He's made a mess of my studio. Run away with it like he did before. It was so cute because he kept tripping over it. It was hilarious. Aw, too tired. See, <laughs> he tripped over it. I didn't. I don't think I caught it on camera, but that was so cute. <laughs>